Tyree Kill uh, was speaking about his quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa, who still has not gotten his deal done as the Dolphins are getting ready for training camp here coming up shortly. And so Tyreek Hill was on SportsCenter on Friday, and he spoke about his quarterback and what he deserves from a financial standpoint. For people to like sit here and try to discredit it to and say, you know, he's not deserving of a contract is 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 wild to me, man. Because like a lot of guys on the team understands his value and understands, you know, that we need him. Like we need we, we need his leadership. We need his mindset. Like the mindset that he brings into each and every week is there. Like it's like it's like Terminator almost, man. So I feel like he should be one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. You know, obviously save some room for <clears throat> me. But, uh, uh, so that was Tyree Kill, uh, you know, getting a laugh out of somebody there at the end. Uh, I don't know who the hell that was, but um, Tyree Kill uh, sticking up for his guy. Can, too, can I ask moment. you guys a question? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Should he hold out if he doesn't get the contract before camp? That'd be sweet. Tua? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't that strategically say we're going to know what the value is truly of, of Tua if he were to hold out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think you've got a way if you're him, and I don't know the specifics to the contract, but you've got to weigh the injury risk. He's had a number of concussions, man, some bad ones. Like, I, I don't know if, if he goes into the season and has one or two bad ones and he passes up on whatever they offer him, there might be an element of it that you go, like, was it worth uh-oh, it? Oh, right. You know, like, you know, that might not be there on the other side. Because I, I think that's the biggest holdup probably within the conversation of his extension is his injury history and how they're putting in the guarantees, the injury only guarantees all the language surrounding that. I think that's the, the like greatest concern for the dolphins with this contract, because since Mike McDaniels has gotten there, he's been incredibly productive. You know, you, you go back to last season, I mean, he led the league in yards you know, he's been throwing for, you know, mid-high 20s as far as touchdown passes. And he's been a good decision maker. You know, t- to me, since he's been there, he's got a winning record as a starting quarterback, which, you know, I don't like to put too much weight in. But that was through Brian Flores, through Mike McDaniels. Doesn't matter. Like, when he's in there, the way he operates within the offense, the way he's played for this team, he gives him a shot. And, and there's something to be said for that. So, he, he, I'm with Tyreek on this. He should be paid. I think he will be paid. It's just going to be the structure of the deal, and I think it's going to be too much money to pass up on before the season starts. Uh, that, that's just my opinion on it. I, I could very well be wrong, and maybe he'll play in, you know, throughout the last year of this thing, but I, I think they'll get it done. I mean, Tyreek Hill's numbers have gotten better with Tua than with Mahomes, and I'm not saying that Tua is a better quarterback than Mahomes. Nobody would say that, but the idea that, like the pushback on guys like him or Brock Purdy is always, well, you know, it's it's what's around him. It's the system they're in. All right, so what do you want him to do? Force a trade out of Miami to go prove himself elsewhere? Like if it's working, that's the whole point. Like if the right. system is working and he's the beneficiary of, beneficiary of it, then who cares? Like what, what does it matter who's around him as long as they're there and it's successful? Like the guy deserves to get paid. But if you were to hold out, that would be fascinating. That's because, a great point, by the way. Over uh, 1,700 receiving yards. It's crazy. He's got two, it's nuts. He's got 238 catches in two years. <laughs> like, and he missed a game last year. <laughs> it's, like, right. it's like you just look at the numbers, you go, well, yeah. And also, Tyree Kill's probably going to want to get paid. Like, he's outperformed his contract. Now that Justin Jefferson's making, what, $35 million a year? Like, he's probably going to want to get paid. Like, I just I look at it and I go... If he were to hold out, which I think we've talked about this before, quarterbacks are kind of judged differently. But if you were Tyreek Hill, or if you were Tua, rather, and you wanted to make a statement, why not? I mean, I I feel like that gives you a ton of leverage. Justin Jefferson surpassed, I I believe, Tyreek Hill's number. Because when he signed there, he signed an average annual value of $30 million per year. Mm. So, like, the bar was set from Tyreek. And now to your point about how he's, I mean, look, Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Tamir are one and two right now. Maybe Devontae Adams, you could put some others up in that conversation. But, you know, to me, the production-wise, it's been Tyreek and, and Justin Jefferson who can at least statistically, you know, prove that. So maybe that's another portion of the conversation is both Tyreek and Tua are trying to work on this thing together, knowing that that high tide raises all boats. 
Mm. And Jalen Waddle just got paid this offseason, right? Yep. I think. Yep. I mean, it was you know it wasn't resetting the market where where Hill probably will. And look, Stephen Ross has deep deep pockets, so he could pay out a ton in signing bonuses and make that work. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we would all agree that Tua needs to be playing. Like if yeah. you're if you're the yeah. Dolphins, yeah. you you got to be thinking to yourself whatever that is that we need to make sure that Tua is in playing for for yeah. this team. I mean that could be a very demoralizing thing to not have Tua there when training camp opens. Yeah, he doesn't need to be going to Egypt or anything like that. Is that what you're saying? I mean, you know, if he got time or, or, or you know, Mango Deck or something like that. <laughs> yeah, where, where, where would you recommend he go if he did hold out? I've never been to oh, Egypt, so I don't know what I would be telling him he's missing out on. I have been to Mango Deck, though. Yes. Um, and if he hasn't been there or if he has been there, then he knows what he's missing out on. You now, know? he's from Honolulu. I mean, that's... So... That's a little bit different than Mango Deck in, in, in Mexico. Though. I mean, when you were there for the Pro Bowl, like any recommendations? Well, you know? it was quite a different environment during the Pro Bowl. I've been to uh, Honolulu while it wasn't the Pro Bowl, and it just didn't hit the same. Which, by the way, if we don't do a, a show from Honolulu at our fine affiliate Fox Sports 990, it's on you guys. Well, I would like to do it on Why the beach on in Waikiki if we were to go yes. there and do a show. It would need we would need to do it like live on location. Yes. I would I would be okay with that. I can just remember how good the calamari was there. I mean, it was really And really by the good. way, that show Kyler Murray? Oh, it was Kyler, Kyler Murray was amazing and, on that and beach. That means that our show would go on at midnight, I believe. Midnight Hawaii time, which all sorts of uh, fun people are walking around at that I time. I mean, it's just the party's just getting started. Yeah. You know, we getting to work and they getting to work. You know. That work. That <laughs> that work. Yeah. Is that what they're getting? Might be some luau's going on, you know. Um, so, listen, uh, it would be nice uh, if we could get a fun little holdout story from a quarterback uh, entering into the season. Um, and then maybe they go into panic mode. Who's the backup in uh, in Miami? Why do I not Mike know? Mike White. Oh, all right. Which yeah. is one of the reasons why I think you look at it, too, and go, yeah, go you don't want play. that show. Yeah, 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 you don't. If you're you the Dolphins, you don't want that. Yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, so uh, so we'll keep you uh, up to date as to whether or not uh, Tua gets his contract done uh, while we're live on the air here. That'll be fun. Who's most likely to hold out? I don't know. I mean, I guess Tua, but I don't think it's either are likely, are they? I'm saying who is like, is it, is it, you know, is it C.D. Lamb? Is he more likely? Is it? He's the one that makes the most sense because he's the one that is, is up Chase? against it. I mean, technically Dak could if he wanted to. Is it Jamar you know? Chase? No. Well, speaking of, there is a uh, the tag deadline That's for right. long-term extension is today. And uh, it's already been announced that T. Higgins and the Bengals will not reach a deal, so he's going to play on the franchise tag. $21.8 million coming to T. Higgins this season. Then he's going to hit the market next year. I bet. Yeah. So he's uh, looking to have a, a big seat. Now, do, let me ask you this. If Tua did hold out, would that open the floodgates to other quarterbacks wanting to hold out? Because I don't think a quarterback has ever held out to get a contract, right, as you're in training camp. Like, Emmett Smith was, you know, one of the more famous ones that, that went into the season. They went a couple of games into the season, then he got paid. But, like, if Tua did it, do you think Dak would be, okay, well, I'm going to hold out too. Like, well, if, Dak if this already works. got paid by them, though. There's too much goodwill between him and Dallas, right? I mean. You would have to assume so. I think there's a good relationship there. I don't think the relationship between him and Jerry Jones is spoiled where he would play hardball that way. I think he's just going he's assuming he's going to get what he's deserving of. I just can't wait till Tua does get paid and people bitch about it. And say, well, I mean, he's paid. Uh, he's a top three, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. He's not a top three quarterback. It's like, all right, well, that's how this works. Like it, it's his time. It's his turn to get paid. He's going to get paid. And if we want to be, if you want to argue about it, He's had a better start to his career than Trevor Lawrence has. It is an interesting yeah. scenario Statistics to introduce. Speak. But to introduce that scenario would be interesting. Like if a guy like Tua held out and they immediately, well, if if it works out where they don't 
pay him, then then it's like, okay, don't hold out if you're QB, I would assume. But if they if if he gets good results very quickly, then you would have to assume then that will set a new precedence for, for how quarterbacks are handling things when they get to a point in time where they want a new contract. If you have success, it's, it's a what they call a copycat league. If it yeah. worked, you, 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 you know, do it. You know, you probably see a new trend. The guy saying, listen, hey, I'm not coming to camp if you don't give me a new contract. And players on the Dolphins wouldn't have an issue with it, right? It doesn't sound like it. It just sounds no. like everything is checked off on the box for him to have well, why, yeah, why would you not have an issue? It. Why would you not have an issue with other players doing it, but then – you have an issue with the quarterback toy. Yeah, no, I'm just curious if, if quarterbacks are judged differently or treated differently, you know, based on that, if they decided to take that approach. Well, I think when it comes to the money, every player in the locker room is understanding. You get as much as you can while you can. Now, if you got a dude who <laughs> did something before, like a game, uh, a little different, puts the team in a bad spot and all that, which hurts everyone. But as far as going into training camp, most most guys are very understanding of that. At least that was my experience. I don't know if you differ in that, Lavar. No, no, no. I'm on I'm on the same page with that. I mean, most guys like when you come in, especially when you someone got a deal done or something, they'll be like, "What's up, man? Oh, congrats, yeah." Like new money, There's, yeah, new <laughs> money. We're going to eat. Yeah, we're we eating tonight. New money, you know. Must be nice. Want a sizzler? Going sizzler. <laughs> we going sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> 